I'm going to explain to you uh, my uh, latest invention, and it's uh, an over unity magnetic gravity motor, hydrogen generator, and an air hydrogen diesel motor. And my name is Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall. I've uh, done this in Japanese and in Chinese. All you need is a bicycle, rear wheel. That is a basic principle there. I'm holding up the one of my drawings. So you need a bike wheel. Now, every village, town, house in China has got a bicycle. All you need is a piece of pipe in this case it's 45 mils across and then you cut it in lengths of 30 mil, 35 mil, 40 mil and you fill it with lead. This gives it weight and a magnetic field on the outside. That's a steel pipe, cut to length, then you fill it with lead. Step one, rear bicycle wheel. Step two, you need about 20, 45 millimeter by 45 millimeter piece of pipe, uh, fill it with lead. Step three, you need uh, neodymium magnets, which are available in India and China, everywhere. So you have your bicycle wheel and these are all magnets, they're, they're uh, disc, circular, 10 mil thick, very powerful. You can arrange them either on the outside of the wheel or the inside of the wheel. Then you need some sort of a guide. You can do this with plywood, but you must maintain a space and something that will be heavy wearing around here. So if you're going to do it out of some sort of a uh, MDF or plywood, or you can do it out of a uh, tube of some sort. Um, but this piece here has to be something that will allow the magnetic field to pass through and also uh, allow for the piece of pipe as it's been brought down here if you've got all these loaded up with the heavy pipe two or three pounds a couple of kilos whatever the case may be that will fall and pull this around so when you're loaded again you take one out of here bring it around with electromagnets and you'll probably find that um, It'll be very easy to uh, push these wheels because as they're falling, they're spinning and they build up a momentum. If it gets to here, it'll run around and come up to here anyhow. But you want it quicker than that because for every one that's coming out, you want to replace it up the top. So you fill this like a magazine with maybe 10 magnets, uh, rather 10 uh, pieces of pipe like that up here all lined up ready to go, electromagnets around here so when it pops out of here you accelerate it with an uh, electromagnet back up to this position. So ideally this would be filled with uh, uh, pieces of pipe with lead ready to go and then as the wheel turns, as this wheel turns it's turning because it's uh, magnetically attracted to all of these uh, down here. And then when it reaches this point, these uh, wheels are spinning. And a uh, little bit of sound effect there. And we'll run around and then copy it now. So if you put electromagnets here, 
you can fire them up quite easily. But the momentum would carry them up that high anyhow. So it's not a weight problem, it's a speed problem. You want to get them up there quick as possible to reload this. The faster you can reload it, the faster this will spin. So basically you've got uh, electromagnets propelling the steel balls high speed to a new cycle. Something like that. Now a pipe cut to length 45mm filled with lead is very easy and available in junkyards around uh, China and India. Uh, the pipe is uh, magnetically drawn to the magnet. Then as the pipe is in, a guide begins to rotate and fall around the tube and then be pushed away from the magnets. The weight of the balls, or in this case uh, pipe, turns the wheel as they fall around the tube, separates the roller from the magnet, pulling the magnets on the wheel, and at the same time rolls, building up spin and momentum, leaving the wheel 13 positions lower one at a time. The weight of these tubes turns the wheel as they fall around the guide, keeping the roller from the magnet. Now this is important, you've got to keep the rolling pipe away from the magnet and that is why you've got to have a guide that can take and separate by two or three mils the magnet from the pipe so it can roll. The energy required to pulse the electromagnet is gained from coils of 1.6 millimetre uh, wound copper wire in coils placed around the left side that charges a battery and generator. So what you've got is these are coils here. So as the fields go through this generates electricity down into a mag into a uh, battery. You're also driving a generator, uh, which would be ideal if you need to wind it up to get it going. Just a reminder now. The momentum of the rotation of the ball has been built up. Spinning free energy continues to run to the cylinder. Its pulse triggers the top of the tube to participate again and fall. In the USA and Japan, hydrogen cars were invented and the men were murdered. Hydrogen cars would have started a wave of diesel generating generators producing free energy in Japan. Uh, the following drawing is a carbon plate design that I have drawn up for uh, producing hydrogen and carbon, which is up there, hydrogen and oxygen. These are carbon plates I used, but you've got to separate the two. Although it's one tank, you must separate the two. You've got to avoid air on top being then turned into hydrogen as the air is pushed out. And then the same would apply here. The air is pushed out by the hydrogen bubbles coming up. If you mix those two, you've got yourself a bomb. Now, using bicarbonate of soda can be added to assist conductivity, but also um, just for health. You can build a generator like this and bottle this water and this water that is now hydrogenated and oxygenated, and both of those liquids will cure all diseases. Now the next is how a fuel injection system could be converted to run on hydrogen. A French inventor ran a car on compressed air. He's been developing this for years. And of course he's also dropped out of sight. Uh, had a 300 kilometre range. Uh, he converts the air motor to a... Now if you converted the air motor to a diesel, and all it is is a pump, 
His motor was just to pump. You put the compressed air in, it pushes the piston down. Then the other piston, it pushes air into that. It pushes the piston down. Using this system, you could build a diesel that is like a pump. So there's no compression stroke. What you do is the diesel will uh, be pushed down via the mixture of hydrogen and oxygen as a fuel source and the compression is eliminated because there's already compressed air that is ready to be used. So you could put in 20 psi, 10 psi. Uh, you could use it in a um, gasoline engine. Same would apply, except you don't need the compression and exhaust strokes. Or the induction stroke. So the air car uses a pump motor. Each downstroke is a power stroke, while a diesel is a four stroke. A diesel designed pump with compressed air eliminates the intake of atmospheric air, therefore no intake or compression stroke. Results in compressed air injected at the top of the stroke and usually a diesel runs at about 18 to 20 psi. But with an ordinary uh, gasoline engine, you only need about 10 psi. This will set all nations free of uh, the United States and uh, England. That's what it's all about. They dominate the world by Now this is the French car. The air motor is simply a pump, easily copied to run as a diesel with power strokes only with air supplied from compressed air stored in tanks built into the floor. To generate electricity, the power output is enormous. In transport, buses, trains, trucks, cars, the power can also run a compressor to recharge the tanks. And produce hydrogen. This is what the, uh, the simple motor looks like. It's just a uh, air pressure pushes that piston down, air pressure pushes that piston down. This one comes back up, exhausting. Then it's pushed down. This comes back up, exhausting. Compressed air in the French design stores air at high pressure in tanks manufactured from the Kevlar carbon fibres. In summary, free hydrogen gravity motor, compressed air in a storage tank, diesel engines, no need for compression strokes, fast power per cylinder, running on hydrogen, free perpetual energy, and of course my name is Brian Leonard Lightning Marshall. If you, uh, also, if you go on the internet and type my name in, you'll find, uh, put in AIDS Cure New Guinea, it'll find my name. This is a look at the uh, cylinders that are manufactured by uh, this French uh, company and uh, it'll uh, store enormous pressures of air, 40 to 50,000 psi, 25,000 kilo, uh, kilograms per square inch. This is the uh, rear of the engine. And uh, there's your air in compressed tanks. On a truck, you'd need something more like this, but that's enough to run you around uh, in my system. That's enough to run you around the planet. Now, the next stage would be uh, aircraft. The uh, weight of uh, the fuel is about one third the body weight of the plane. So, getting rid of that can be easily done by using the same type of system. So, air or hydrogen motors for aircraft is the next stage. First, it eliminates the weight of the fuel. One third the weight of the 747 is fuel. All components are lightweight, easily installed in the cargo hold. The 
most dangerous tool to destroy Big Pharma and the energy industry worldwide is what I'm showing you. Now, I've been curing AIDS, cancer, malaria, and of course, uh, many attempts have been made on my life, but uh, they're unable to do so. Now, some of us are protected by the divine hand, and I have been uh, challenging the queen to get off the throne because I am the most royal person on the planet. Some, of course, call me Christ. That's fine, you call me what you like. But uh, there is no doubt in the world that I will be able to destroy United States, England and all of these uh, monopolies around the world that are trying to reduce the world population down to 5 billion so they can, uh, 500 million so they can kill uh, 6.5 billion people with diseases and nuclear wars and all this kind of thing. That's what they're trying to do at the moment, start a nuclear war with Iran. And... Um, Israel is dominating the United States. All of the senators in the United States are uh, influenced by the Bible Belt of the United States and supporting money sent to uh, Israel. But uh, all of the key personnel in uh, each of the departments of the government are Jewish, with dual nationality. Eight years ago, engineers in Japan manufactured a car that ran on water. 80 kilometres per litre. A tank filled with 30 litres of water has a range of 2,400 kilometres. That's a little car there. It was all set up to be produced. And of course they were the threatened or killed, I don't know which, but uh, as of uh, eight years ago it disappeared. And Benjamin Fulford has said that he interviewed the treasurer of Japan and they were told that unless they handed the money finances of the country over to the banking oligarchy, um, an earthquake would hit. And of course uh, when they refused to do so, uh, the earthquake hit exactly at the moment they threatened the Japanese government with and it hit a, a nuclear plant, didn't destroy it but um, the oil, in, oil industry is dominated by Rockefeller the same company which built the Fukushima nuclear reactors uh, which was built on an earthquake fault line now uh, inside the uh, facilities were supposed to be these uh, cameras but they turned out to be uh, small nuclear devices. The Jews then detonated the nuclear plant at the same time as the Americans detonated a nuclear device on the ocean floor. Now in uh, Indonesia some years ago they dropped a bathysphere onto the uh, plate between India and Australia and um, that caused the tsunami that came in and uh, took out Aceh. Aceh was the area in uh, Indonesia which was most resistant to the governments. So they do the same thing in Japan. At the same time as a nuclear reactor it was detonated with a uh, small nuclear device. Try to kill you all. This is, you've got to get this straight. Now in the United States, an even greater invention I uh, did come across, uh, a man, Jimmy Klein, while developing a hydrogen generator for cutting metals, uh, realised it could run a car. Better than the Japanese, it used four ounces of water to run his car 100 miles. He could have crossed America in 25 gallons. Now, the 
Here's uh, Jimmy Klein working on this. He discovered it by trying to invent a new way of using hydrogen to cut metals. And uh, this is what he came up with. Then he discovered that if he put the fuel in the car, um, he got this tremendous mileage for, for nothing. He's dead, some say, uh, eight years ago, and he was reportedly working for the Pentagon building a Hummer conversion for their Hummer Jeeps. Now, Mr. Paul Pentone, he is in jail. His invention was brilliant. It could run on anything. And uh, it appears that uh, what he was doing was running a uh, fuel pipe through the centre of the exhaust pipe. And the heat generated some sort of a plasma. And then the intake line would go through the uh, uh, centre of the exhaust, as said, and then it could also be run on water. Uh, he is now missing. There he is demonstrating it in Utah. Now years before these inventions, a uh, Mr. Stanley Meyer invented another hydrogen generator. His invention uh, was perfect. It produced hydrogen at a rapid rate and used the car engine injectors to power the car. Now he was using mains power from his house to generate the uh, hydrogen, whereas he could have just as easily had a generator running that, uh, on the car to produce the hydrogen as it goes along, which I believe he eventually done. And then he was invited to join the uh, Pentagon to work on their equipment, converting it over and the tanks and so forth. However, his first day there, he was murdered. This is what the output was of his particular device. There's he put it into a Volkswagen dune buggy. And uh, he said that uh, 22 gallons would go from Los Angeles to uh, New York. On the side of his car, it says Jesus is Lord. So that's not a real good thing that when you're a religious man loving the Lord Jesus and... Um, it was just too much for the Americans that are killing. Americans are all satanic. So like Mr. Klein, Mr. Meyer was offered a job at the Pentagon. Uh, on the first day he ate a meal in the mess hall, called his brother telling him, I have poisoned me and then he died. Now, these men are very naive. They're brilliant scientists, but they're very naive. They think that there is an oil crisis that never was. America's got more oil than it can ever use. I worked in the oil industry myself. There's 3,000 years supply of oil in Canada alone for the whole world. Australia has a 1,000 years supply. In the United States, there's so much oil, I can't possibly even estimate how much they've got up in Alaska. And they closed down the western slopes of Alaska because of the enormous amounts of oil in them. So all of these inventions have one thing in common, patent rights, secrecy, and a strong potential for death. For this reason, I have designed a magnetic over-unit gravity wheel and single-stroke diesel compression, compressed air hydrogen motor. It's free for the world to use. So we need a low cost application in the village level um, in China and India. There's no patent rights to worry about, no secrecy, no potential for assassination. If, if you've got a billion people in China, another billion in India, then uh, you've got hundreds of thousands of villages where they could be manufacturing these things out of bicycles. 
Therefore, to achieve sufficient HH2 as hydrogen output, the technology is overcome by my methods to confirm uh, these break breakthroughs. Now, prior to this, I built a device that cured AIDS and cancer and VD and uh, so forth, um, and I could cure all the laboratory diseases. These were developed by the, what is known as the Eugenics uh, Society, the German Warfare Departments of the United States, Canada, Australia and uh, Europe. Uh, the AIDS virus, for example, has a, a patent number. You can Google it, 4647773. And uh, tells you the story about that. Now the magnet, uh, the huge magnetic motor I was building, was about 500 horsepower, it required specially designed magnets, magnets and manufactured in China. These were stopped, that's a supply, and all the magnets I had on hand were stolen. Any poor nation with large populations have the parts available, an old bike, pipe, and lead found in junkyards, a cup of wire, car battery and a generator. This is equals the end of oil dominance, wars and invented deadly diseases. See me curing AIDS, cancer, malaria, etc. in New Guinea. Google Brian Leonard Gulotny Marshall cures AIDS in New Guinea. There it is in Chinese and of course in Japanese. 